You want you to do that? Let's see how I'm going to see. We acknowledge and honor the Pechanga Band, one of seven bands that call themselves Payakuikum people, which means people of the West, and upon whose ancestral land we worship today. We recognize with gratitude these Pechanga elders, past and present, who have and continue to care for this region. We seek to partner in continuing this stewardship and working for just peace. Okay, our prelude this morning is going to be a sing along. And so I'm going to sing this very, very simple song once, and then I'm going to invite you guys to join me. And let's see how it goes. Make a swan God, make a swan, Holy Spirit, swan, let our love flow, so the world will know we are one. And you, we think we do that. Yes. Mm -hmm. Make a swan go, make a swan, Holy Spirit, make a swan, let our love flow. Yes, well done, <laughs> sir. Thank you. Welcome to United Church of the Valley. As a progressive Christian community, we believe that following the path and teachings of Jesus could lead us to an experience of the sacred and the oneness and unity of all life. We would also affirm that the teachings of Jesus provide but one of many ways to experience the sacred. We can draw from diverse sources of wisdom on our spiritual journey. So wherever you are on your journey, you are welcome here. We know that the way we behave toward one another is the fullest expression of what we believe. Welcome to you who are here in the building, and welcome to you who are joining us online. Now we have a gathering song. I am not the one to lead the singing. That's <laughs> <laughs> oh, about all I can do. <laughs> Is that my son, or do you want me to sing? Yeah, you can sing right there. You have to listen well. Okay, this is one I know all of you know because you've done it before. <laughs> if you don't know it, it's easy. <laughs> Get the camera. We're talking to <laughs> Hey, you guys say no. I've got peace like a river. I've got peace like a river. I've got peace like a river in my soul. I've got peace like a river. 
can be good, while monopolies are oppressive and limiting. May we support laws that aim to expand the good and disallow the injustices of monopolies. May we see that charity is not the enemy of the marketplace, but a branch of it. Rooted in, in your global justice. We'll see the rest of third wall. So a little bit of this is going to be the timing. So if you're getting out there on the edge, and I want you to watch Tyler Boy. He's going to throw it to the inside. The inside. Right, watch him right now. Get that ball roll there. You're holding him a little bit more. You're allowing that, that safety to get him home with the play. Will Levis was outside the pocket. The timing was there. I don't know why his eyes were not on Tyler Boy. In a third and nine. Andre Spear is motioning around the left field. Which was four. He left us over the bit. What's he going to do with Tyler? Where'd he go? And he finds Tyler Boyd. There's the man. He was supposed to look more of a last play. Finds the guy that Brian Callahan called his security blanket for the first down. And here's the upside of Will Levis. I want you to watch. Here he is again. Tyler Boyd. If you missed him last play, we're coming back to him on this one. Watch this tight window.
through passing them the sacred writings and the sea. The first from the book of Ecclesiastes. In the third chapter, beginning at the 12th verse, I know that there is nothing better for people than to be happy and to do good while they live, that each of them may eat and drink and find satisfaction in all their toil. This is the gift of God. From the epistle of James in the fifth chapter, beginning at the first verse. Now listen, you rich people, weep and wail because of the misery that is coming on you. Your wealth has rotted, and moths have eaten your clothes. Your gold and silver are corroded. Their corrosion will testify against you and eat your flesh like fire. You have hoarded wealth in the last days. Look. The wages you failed to pay the workers who mowed your fields are crying out against you. The cries of the harvesters have reached the ears of the Lord Almighty. You have lived on earth in luxury and self-indulgence. You have fattened yourselves in the day of slaughter. You have condemned and murdered the innocent one who was opposing you. Thanks, Steve. So as you can tell, we have a real feel-good message from this morning. <laughs> the, uh, we have been working now for a couple weeks on just peacemaking. We're talking about peace with justice. A just peace. And just peace is somewhere in the middle of pacifism and conflict. It's a just, a peace with justice, not a peace at any cost, basically. We have talked about just peace in the community. We have talked about just peace in uh, our relationship with the earth. And today we're going to talk about just peace in the marketplace. When I found these passages in our scripture, I was surprised at how well they fit with the book that we've been studying, Just Peacemaking. Just Peacemaking is, uh, attempts to give us a, a paradigm for a marketplace that will bring peace by bringing justice. A marketplace where all can thrive, where all are included, where everyone has access, um, and where people can maintain their dignity. And one of the points that the book makes is that people want to be productive. People want to see the work of their hands. Uh, be it creative work, be it physical labor, be it working in the soil, um, be it intellectual uh, labor, intellectual uh, creativity, people do want to be productive. And so our writing, uh, and so our verses in Ecclesiastes fits this perfectly, that people should what is good is for people to eat, drink, and enjoy the toil of their hands and have satisfaction in their toil. That is what is good. And so just peacemaking encourages us to think about how do we open up the marketplace to everyone? How do we respect the gifts and the talents of other people? and allow them to use and develop those gifts and talents or develop new talents that they have aptitude for um, to be involved in the marketplace so they can be a part of the economy so that they can benefit from the economy. It challenges us also to look at development in a new way, um, to look at development as developing human beings and developing communities 
So when we're looking to at economic development, it's not for the purpose just of generating money, <laughs> it's for the development of the community so that the community benefits, so that the people you know, benefit, and that they are developed as human beings because self-actualization is something that human beings strive for as well. The other thing it challenges us to do is to respect the community in which we're developing. We, we shouldn't have the mindset, we as Midwesterners, we as Americans really, have that mindset of this is our economic model and we're going to cookie cutter it all over the globe and it's going to work. Because it may not. The resources may not be there. The people resources may not be there. The culture may not support something like that. And so our, our book encourages us to look instead at developing with the dignity of the community in mind so that it can be sustaining. And sustaining gets us back to not only our care of the earth, but our care of one another. Sustainable development does not deplete the resources. Sustainable development fits in with the community. Sustainable development builds on the culture, builds on the gifts of the people. Sustainability is as important in our economics as it is in our environment. So that's what our book tells us. Now I want to see what kind of ideas you guys might have. How can we, as United Church of the Valley, we as individuals, how can we work toward peace in the marketplace? What are we doing well? What are some things that we could do differently? And so we have a very small group today, um, but I'm gonna encourage us to get into groups of about three or four and have a little discussion about justice in the marketplace. And what, is, what does that mean to you? And how can we, you know, how are we doing a good job? What can we continue to do? What can we do new? Um, and something to keep in mind as we're, as we're doing that is the passage from James. You know, how can we fight the exploitation of the labor force? How can we fight the hoarding of wealth? How can we how can we fight for a more just and inclusive and sustainable um, marketplace? Not at not at all a light topic this morning. I think small group discussion is good. So if you want to just gather in groups of three or four. Um and I'm gonna come back there and gather folks online and groups. And uh, each group should have someone who's taking some notes, either mentally or written down, um, so we can share your ideas. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, Hello, James. Oh, 
I'd like to be able to reach out to the whole world. Is building community parts really at home? Yeah, it does. And next door. Okay, we're sharing it for yeah. Yeah. Oh, I feel so sure so 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 I 
Because that shows we are not alone. We have other people out there doing similar things. So we are just a small part of a larger group. Because I know you guys hear about Pillow Pine. They do interracial, they do the rainbow, they do all kinds of things that we should be doing in all these communities. Getting along with people and accepting people where they are. Um, and they talk about government structures and unions that can help um, the community. And um, I always like the interfaith. If more people could, churches could be part of the interfaith, I think we have a stronger um, community. Um, we support Emily's place, and that's wonderful. Space. Emily's Space. Emily, space. Emma, oh, okay, Emily's Place. Space. 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 <laughs> Was it used to be yeah. place? No. Yes. Oh, okay. Just for this way. It just makes space. Emily's space. Because we're working, when I hear about that, because I've been listening to the, we do it, I think, on Tuesday and the method, to make your Methodist person on Thursday. So I watch it on when they do the Zoom. And they did the book, the speaker, the author of uh, the Just Peace book, he did a two part um, thing down there. On Zoom, and it was very interesting to help to get to know what we were we are doing here, and we're sharing our buildings with other churches. And I think that's great because that's the way we should show the world that we can get along. And we we have AA participation here too. So these are all groups that you know we can participate in to show we can get along. Okay, sure. Uh, and I, I heard you talk about what we can do uh, within the community. And person that, that came up was to support local business. 
Uh, I had mentioned, um, and for those who have lived here a long time, uh, you may remember the Little Professor Bookstore. Yes. That was yeah, it was so cute. And it was so welcoming and comfortable place to be until Barnes & Noble opened up down the street and they were gone. But to support local business restaurants, and there's some restaurants that are still around now but because they were supported during the pandemic. Calhoun's. Calhoun's. I mean. Angelo's. <laughs> yes. Um, and uh, of course I left the list over there, but um, <laughs> You know, one of the, I mean, UCV has supported several different groups uh, that are local. Um, and it's, Deb, what's the name? I, I forget, Rancho. Rancho, Rancho Dallas Rancho Dallas We We've supported them and the Myriad of Food Bank and several other uh, organizations <laughs> here in the Valley for, for a number of years. And, um, you know, we make donations, we make donations to the Duluth farm workers. Um, and thank you. Thank you, Becky. She, her ears are burned when she's somewhere in Europe. <laughs> and, um, but it's, it's these types of things. And, and Fran brought up a good point. She goes, well, how do people really know all the things that we do? And so it got me thinking, well, we probably need to put this on the website, not without the specifics, uh, just to protect people's privacy and, yeah. and their safety. But uh, so I wrote and went on my phone to go and do that. <laughs> so uh, anyway, that's it. Yeah. So Clark being? Okay. Um, anybody want to talk from me? <laughs> um, one, one thing that was talked about a lot in our group was just basically treating the people who do to work on our behalf with respect. Yeah. Um, that um, Sherry was talking about that they had a, a, a pest control person who, who was just crushed when he heard that that passed because he was she was so kind to him. And um, he happened to be black, and he says, "You, you, know, you know, you wouldn't believe how I'm treated often in this in this area." And um, Catherine was talking about it before. Catherine was a teacher many, many, many years ago. Hey, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, she was a she was a a, a waitress. She was a, and um, so we took the. Um, because they worked their butts off, and she never went around. I was a waiter. I was, I was a failed waiter and a bus boy. You know, I know people in the service industry work deserve to be compensated. Um, we also talked about, about where we where we purchase the things that we purchase. Um, Tammy, right? Tammy. Tammy was a principal principal in Wyoming. She's principal. Uh, she's visiting here today. Sharing screen. And uh, when the pandemic broke out, she caught flack because she spent more money on the masks that she bought um, because she was skeptical of the masks that were made in China. Like, who made those? Were they, you know, were they compensated? For she she uh, was uh, aware of uh, uh, where she's purchasing things. <laughs> on my wardrobe, let me tell you about the <laughs> song. <laughs> so this T-shirt is... So it's a renewable, oh. it's a renewable resource. resource. Thank you. <laughs> These shorts are Patagonia. So if you ever get a chance to, if you want, it's really interesting to look at um, oh, the Patagonia. Um, no, they were made by a company called Patagonia, not by um, the Patagonia. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, but they also, these are all completely recycled and they're fair trade. So they're, they're, there's a third party that, Verifies that the people who make the product were paid a fair wage wherever mm -hmm. they live, and they were paid a fair wage to do the thing that they did. So everything about it makes me feel like, yeah, and they're a little more expensive. But well, yeah. Timmy, I do believe you walk the park. <laughs> then I then I pointed out that I have no idea where this. <laughs> it it could have been made by slave labor. 
you know, it could have been that oh, yeah. some of the clothes that we wear that are worn here today that are not by us now may have been made by slave labor if we're not if we're not conscious of what we're doing. Anyways, uh, that's I think that pretty much does it. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, from the uh, online group, we talked about um, you know something that, that used to be does well is we live very simply. Our budget is very fair, <laughs> so that uh, we do have money to do things, you know, out in the community to support ministries and, and things like that. Um, we also talked about um, some of the things to fight against, like. Um, this uh, idea of bringing back the company store and the company housing where the company kind of owns you because you know you're never going to pay off the debt of living and eating <laughs> um where they own the property um any corporate speculation corporations are speculating and people probably do speculating on housing the way people speculate yeah. in the stock market yeah. and driving prices up um, Luke has shared a lot of wisdom uh, from him and his group that uh, his group of friends that they're living more simply. They they're not striving for the American dream because they know the American dream is really real. Um, they're not as interested in uh, showing off, you know, how much things cost as opposed to what is the function, what is the purpose. He's like, you know, if you, if you made enough money to to buy a 10 million dollar mansion you obviously care more about what things cost than about their actual usefulness um so i thought that was very promising uh jen and lenny were talking about um uh what jen was saying in new mexico uh college is paid for through through bachelors through, you can get a bachelor's degree for free in new mexico um so they're not saddling you know so they're college graduates with an asshole debt that's going to take 40 years to pay off. Um, and also, uh, there's oh, there some other good points there. Oh, that um, having an economy or an American dream is more about a feeling of inclusion and, 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 um, and how people, the well being of people, um, uh, and um, versus, you know, the and the harder you work, the bigger the house, the bigger the car, the bigger the better job, you know. Uh, which, I mean, I'm a Gen X, that was what we were all about, you know, me, me, how can I do better than next class? So I'm feeling very hopeful. <laughs> <laughs> And thank, thank you, everyone. Thank you, everyone, for sharing. I don't know uh, what we've been doing with this information because I'm always going to get it for him, but it was Okay, great, great, great. Yeah, we can share. Uh, we'll, well, I'll, I can turn off our chat transcript and you guys can share what you wrote down. Um, we'll get it till then. Perfect. Why don't you join me in prayer? Loving God, who is always present, we pray for all the individual prayers spoken and unspoken, written and unwritten, that you may journey which eat with each through both the joyous moments, and especially through the difficult and painful stretches. Loving God, who is always just, we pray as a community for the wisdom to know what just marketplaces look like and the strength to support them. We pray for the courage to stand against those marketplaces that make them greed and act for injustices large and small towards both workers and consumers. Loving God who is always peace, may we work as a community and as individuals in our places of business, our fields of labor, our industries of service, and our retail markets to ensure all are able to live in dignity. Together we pray. Hear us, O God. I invite you to join me in a prayer circle after service if you want to lift up individual joys and concerns.
Uh, we, 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 we share, we've been, well, no, we, we, we share, share an editor, so yeah. we've kind of been doing both. We've been, let's share, we're sharing that. Oh, yeah. Yeah. At the United Church in the Valley, we seek to be inclusive of all people. We strive for peace and justice among all people. We strive to protect and restore the integrity of our earth. We commit to a path of lifelong learning, compassion, and love. We invite you to be part of this mission, and we thank you for your generosity. There is a collection plate on the organ. For those who are here in person. And of course, all of us can make a donation by going to our website, ucbchurch.org, where you can use either Venmo or PayPal. Of course, you can always mail checks to our mailing address, Post Office Box 1312, Marietta, California, 92564. And I'll call the loss. Oh, there we are. People have been sitting here for days and days. What's that on the floor? Anybody see our yellow candle that's been sitting there since last week? Well, maybe we'll just do it symbolically. <laughs> These things happen. Great symbolism. I just saw it. Yeah. <laughs> I just saw the yellow candle. Something that just. <laughs> okay. Well. Yes, mysterious things do happen in church. <laughs> we light a, yeah, that's a yellow candle, to represent our commitment to just peace in the marketplace. Yellow is the communal color of the merchant, merchant class in Hinduism, while in Islam it denotes wisdom, harmony, and prominence. Today, instead of waving the piece, we will be passing a dollar bill as a symbol of the marketplace. If you want to add your own dollars as you pass the piece, please feel free to do so. We have one of these little chickens right here, I think. Add it to the process. Where are we going? Okay. <laughs> May the peace of Christ be with you and also go with you. As we join together at our communion table, I uh, want us to think about the dignity of every human being and how Jesus really respected the dignity of people, um, how no one was left out of his economy. Everyone was invited to join his group of travelers and to share everything in common. Um, and how they did work and they toiled. And something we don't know about Paul and some of the earlier disciples is that they did work for, uh, for their meals and uh, for their lodging um, as, they, as they were traveling around spreading the gospel. So let us gather together here where we may eat and drink for free all our welcome. I invite our servers to pass out our elements as you give yours at home.
was on that night that Jesus was betrayed, that he was having dinner with his friends, sharing a final meal together. And he, during dinner, he took the bread and broke it, and he said, It takes us all of you and eat it. This is my body broken for you. And so for his end, he likewise took the cup and said, Take this all of you and drink it. This is the cup of the new covenant. And as you eat this bread and drink this cup, remember me. Once again, in the interest of time, we're going to skip our final song. Hopefully we can sing it next week. It's a beautiful song. And we want to invite everyone to um, join in the circle if they would like. Or let the circle come to you. <laughs> we may have to stretch the amoeba over in this general direction. Uh, yeah. oh. As we join in this circle of love and inclusion, may we spread this circle. May we draw this circle wide to reach every corner of the globe with Christ's love. Amen. Amen. Go now in peace. Go now in peace. Let me grow all the around you. Everywhere, everywhere you may go. Amen. Amen. Thank you for our potluck. We have so much food and so few people to eat it. <laughs>